Hey guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today in Casual Talk, I have a Snasky, but I wanted to make just a quick announcement before going into the Casual Talk. There's going to be big changes in the channel. I'm gonna stop Casual Talk next week. Uh, today is uh, with Snasky, and next week it's gonna be with Sis. After that, I'll go on a hiatus from Casual Talk while I prepare. Uh, the second season if you may i'm gonna change a bit of format and it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit different also i'm quoting ragged league content creation uh i'm gonna change the focus of this channel to be an artifact channel it's not for everyone i'm well aware of that but that's when i that's the game i want to play that's content that i want to create uh sorry if some people are gonna be pissed about it um but at the end of the day i need to make stuff that motivates me and that's how I can provide the most value for the people. It's when I do content that I would love to do. And it's going to be artifact content from now on. So the only Rocket League content you'll see now is going to be this Snasky vid. And Sis, uh, casual, Sis casual talk next week. Uh, if you want to leave, that's okay. I get it. Uh, but if you want to be part of this new adventure, you are welcome to come with me. It looks like an amazing game. Cannot wait to play it. I hope you have a wonderful day. And now let's get into casual talk with Snasky. All right. So I just want to start this by saying thank you for doing this, Snasky. No worries. Uh, I start with always the same question. And it's uh, when did you start playing Rocket League? And in your case, it's SARP, right? Nope. No, I started. I started playing Rocket League in 2015, August 2015, I think. And you never yeah. played Sarp? Nope. Oh, I was. I was sure. It's all about the name Supersonic Avengers. That. I oh mean. yeah, but that's because <laughs> Lamb. I met Lamb in like November, October, that 2015, and he came from Sarp, oh. and he had a team there with his cousin, I think, or someone. Uh, that was called Super Sonic Avengers, so he just wanted to continue that. So we did that, and yeah. Ah, oh, that explains it. So you started in 2015. When you started the game, was it instant love, or did it take it some time to grow on you? No, it's hilarious. I, at first, I started playing with uh, some of my friends, and it was just great. It was hilarious. And then I feel like when I met Lamb, it had like a very smooth transition into being competitive all of a sudden. From being super fun to being competitive, and yeah, then I just went on from there. You had like no intention when you you started playing the game to go professional. Oh no, I've played uh, League of Legends and CS at like uh, I don't know at the highest rank, like not high level, but like at the highest rank in both games. And I was like 18 back then, uh, and I was I had almost given up on esports, you know. I was yeah. like, okay, whatever. I tried on in League and I've tried on CSGO now. And now it's time to just focus on education and, you know, whatever with the video games. It can just be for fun. And then I started playing Rocket League for fun while I was working at a casino in a gap year. Like I just finished high school. I was doing a gap year to make some money before I went to study. And I met Lamp and suddenly it changed and I quit my job. Yeah, you kind of had a mentor and a friend at the same time, basically. Exactly. Oh, yeah, that's great. I mean, it's it's funny because I feel like a lot of the, a lot of the pros that I talk to, they're always uh, they always say, oh, I, mean, I guess it, you know, I just have it naturally, kind of a, almost luck all the time, and it it impresses me. Um, it's true. But like, you, I mean, you had to put a lot of hours, it... don't you think? That's not luck. Oh. Well. I don't, it's hard, man. It, I mean, <laughs> making it pro is is like some hard work and it's some luck. I mean, if you never get discovered, like look at a game like CSGO, right? There's yeah. so many pros. I think they pay like 500 people that live off of CSGO or something like that. There's like 400 or 500 pros. To lot. make it into those four or 500 pros is like almost impossible. Like, why would you be impressive compared to the other guy? It's contacts, basically. Is that what you mean? Yeah, basically. Like, yeah, it's a, exactly. It's like a big. Who do you impress, and why? Like, do you have like a certain tournament where you impress people? Like, look at Mummy Snow, for example. Right, yeah. we just picked him up. Yeah. I mean, before the promotion tournament, tournament, I would never have considered Mummy Snow for our team, but because he was so impressive at the promotion tournament, and that's just his luck, right? I mean, it's hard work as well. 
but it's also lucky that I happened to watch him play while he was completely popping off. I mean, imagine if I if I never played well the first time I met Lamp. Yeah. And I would have never met him. I would probably never have gone pro. Or at least the likelihood of that is zero, almost. Hmm, that puts that put things in perspective. Um, so, coming from that, do you think that, you know, upcoming RLRS players or, like, quote-unquote bubble players should focus on trying to... You know, not only play the game extensively to be as good as they can, but also trying to, I don't know, get eyes on them in a sense. Um, Just like I think that I don't know if that's well, uh, that's precise. I've been or... very, I've been very vocal about this on Twitter. Okay. I'm so like, there's so many bubble players that just like complain that they're not getting discovered. That like, uh, you know, we have this friend group amongst pros that uh, we refuse to take in bubble players. Uh, I think it's been bursted a bit now since there's so many new players coming into RCS all the time. But like they just like to cry more about them not becoming pro rather than realizing that it's probably their own fault. You know, I'm not interested in picking a player that's going to cry on Twitter every single time we lose. There's, there's much more to a pro player than just the raw mechanical skill that everybody sees. And that's what they need to realize. If you had to pick one thing besides raw skill for, uh, for, let's say, when you consider a teammate, what would mm -hmm. it be? I think uh, self-awareness and willing... Well, that's not one thing then. I would <laughs> say, like, like self-awareness self about yourself, because I think that's important in Rocket League. Like, f realizing what you're capable of doing and then using that to maximize your... Uh, a role in a team. I, so, if you're the kind of player that's uh, the non-flashy, solid third man, it's it would be to be like uh, having your own team, or I guess like six men, and you hope that you know you can just grind up with the win rate and then get on teams with pros. I guess to get noticed, or is that yeah. would that even not be enough? And it's really like get your I, own team and win. It's hard, man. That, like that's all I can say about yeah. that because <laughs> because they like don't get me wrong. It's a hard job because you've basically gotta like you know do one v two or one v three situations all the time, and you gotta manage boost very well, and you gotta have very um, a very good awareness of where your teammates are and where the other team is all the time. So it, it's a hard job, but it's also hard to notice when they do it right. Because when you do it right, it's when there's nothing wrong with the rotation. It's when everything is just smooth and nobody notices it. Because you've been around a long time, you know, you've faced the days of uh, one big qual day for RLCS. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we've obviously came a long way. What What's your thought on the current format of RLCS? Uh, I think it's getting better, but... I think obviously at like at some level you need one big call day. But it's unavoidable. Like you know, you can't make ten leagues to promote into other leagues. That's just impossible. At a certain level, you need a qualification day. I think the the system they have right now is pretty good, except it should expand to more teams because obviously there's more good teams than are in RLRS or RLCS. Like you could probably argue that four of the RLRS teams, at least in Europe, I don't know much about NA, but in Europe they could compete decently with the RLCS teams. And they do so in other, every other tournament. Like you saw Coliseum, I think there's like uh, three or four. Yeah, it was, uh, Coliseum was crazy in terms of... Yeah, there, there's only three or four RLCS teams that got out of the first round or something like that. Um, if you had one thing to change about Rocket League, like the either in the game, uh, either mechanically or just cosmetically, what would you change? Uh, that's a good question. I know I haven't. The only thing, like I would add in-game uh, items. Obviously, I think everybody says that at yeah. this point. But I think I would make the game like. I think I would make the physics. I would like the physics to become more consistent. So at every patch, it doesn't break or something <laughs> feels changed. Okay, so basically, just polish what we have. Exactly. I think the game is in pretty good state. 
think if you add a few other maps that will make it so you can add like the veto ex aspect you could have teams that are good on some maps and stuff like that i think we're like rocket league is perfect almost when you mean maps do you mean non-standard maps or do you mean uh like regular maps because they're you know they're all the same non -standard. yeah so you you would but, add non-standard maps to rlc oh yeah i've always been a big fan of them and uh, what was in, in the non-standard maps that we have currently in the game? Which which is your favorite? Um, I like the old new Tokyo, but I think that it was a bit too much to change. And also, I think they added it too fast to a competitive scene. But I just think that Rocket League would become much more exciting if we had all these different aspects, rather than just one map where we play a bunch of games and it's basically a coin flip about who wins now. So you mentioned that you really like, uh, you know, you tried your your hands at League of Legends, Counter Strike. Do you follow mm -hmm. a lot of esports? Yeah, I like watching CS:GO especially. I know I think that strategic level with the mechanics they need is interesting. I think League of Legends is a bit too stale. It's like all strategic. Like you, you barely ever see some individual like completely outperform the other one. What so, would be your um, your favorite esports moment? Like every game. Like, it could be in any game. What would be your favorite moment? Uh, that's a good question. I think it might have been back in the day when in League of Legends when Soas did that backdoor thing. I think that was the first time I like really heard casters freak out. And it was so exciting. If you saw that back then. There's the back, uh, the, the, the only back backdoor thing that reminds me is Xpeke's. I don't remember. Oh, what did I say? Did I say Soas? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I meant Xpeke. I was just thinking yeah. of Fnatic. Yeah, yeah I meant Xpeke. The cast of that one. Yeah, that was nuts. I remember that as if it happened yesterday. Exactly. Like it was on same. Yeah. I think that was the most like impactful moment of eSport in my life. I remember it so clearly. You know, I often feel like Rocket League is one of the hard hard game to like get good at. Not Obviously not the hardest, uh, but because mm -hmm. it's so mechanically intensive, do you think it's harder to get better at Rocket League than, let's say, League of Legends? Mm, I think it's different. I think League of Legends is hard to get good at because you don't realize the whole strategic level until you start playing in a competitive level. So you can, you might be a challenger, right? Mm -hmm. But you've never played on a team before. And then suddenly you get into a team and you have to learn not only to play for yourself, but to play for the entire team. That's really hard. Like, that's... Uh, next level hard like becoming mechanically good in games at least for me is easy but getting the whole strategic level and the team level down is super hard at least and i think it is for a lot of people don't you think we experience the same thing in rocket league where we have these uh, mechanical gods in grand champion but like when it comes to tournament play or team plays they just fall off do you think we experience oh, the same thing definitely or they might be a mechanical guard in offense and then they don't know how to defense for shit and then they just get destroyed every single time they move back. The other day we were talking on, on Twitter and uh, you said that you liked uh, Jordan B. Peterson in psychology. Is, uh, has that been one of your uh, favorite subject like in general or? No, it's recent. And what it's, do you... uh, yeah, go ahead. I got the interest from uh, watching some uh, american politician called ben shapiro you probably know him most people probably do he's like uh, known as a uh what do you call it like a, a guy who likes to provoke a provocateur okay right who a lot of people think he says what he says to provoke but in reality you know he's just a very conservative guy that looks at stats over emotions so obviously he says a lot of really um edgy things that people don't like to hear especially liberals so that really got me into like american politics about like all the gun laws uh, everything like that and then i saw ben uh, P uh what's his name jordan peterson yeah uh, because he had all the stuff in canada about them forcing him to to use pronouns or something like that uh, and then i got into his lectures and i found the things he said especially like about evil creatures throughout the times, like Hitler and stuff. Like the, the way he like can clinically uh, research their brain while being objective is just super interesting to me.
Have you always been uh, someone who would like, I don't know, try to try to be, I guess, curious? I don't know how to phrase this, but uh, you know, you've uh, you're obviously someone uh, who's uh, healthy and all that jazz. Are you? Do you look a lot about personal development in general? Well, I've started to. I'm not. I think it was a bit before I got to know about him. I know I I realized how like narrow-minded a lot of people is, and I just refuse to be like that. You know, hard-headed. I I like to get my mind cha uh, my mind changed. I like it when people has facts I don't know about, so I can so you know I have all the information about everything, and I can make my own opinion about things. Yeah, I just got sick and tired of looking at like all those extreme liberalists or extreme conservatives like sitting there trying to convince people to follow their opinion rather than let people like it rather than stating facts and and let people shape their own opinion and that's what i like about uh john peterson mm -hmm. is that he he never concludes anything for you right he just simply gives you the facts and then he lets you like have your own opinion about stuff or you can believe him or not like he doesn't care he's just like saying to you as it is and then yeah, he's sharing his what, viewpoint and you do what you want with it basically exactly he's not saying like this is wrong you're wrong unless it's something that it can actually be proving right or wrong you were uh taking a gap here what was your plan uh like what did you want to study i think i actually didn't have a plan i wanted to do a very um vague kind of marketing slash business study I mean, as as I said, uh, it works a bit differently here. Here we don't really we we pick like a major, and with the major there comes a bunch of like minor classes mm -hmm. that belongs to that subject. So you know, if you pick marketing and business, you'll only have classes related to that. Mm -hmm. So every single study we have here uh, is between well, at least for a bachelor, it's like. Uh, two to three years only, and I was gonna pick only a two years. Um, and then it would be a very vague marketing slash business thing that I would have to study even more to complete. Okay. I would have to go more in depth or like pick yeah. even more. Yeah, that makes sense. And is that something that still interests you, business and marketing, or has that gone out the window? Oh no, it still interests me a lot. I really, I, like as, as I said, I really have come to enjoy psychology and I think marketing is like one of the few um, one of the few workplaces that really abuses psychology yeah. a lot, like forcing you to like stuff by using colors and all that stuff. It's impressing. Uh, it's impressive. Sorry, like marketing is like mind control. <laughs> it is. It, yeah, it really is. And nobody has any idea about it unless you actually research it. Like what a what a simple color can do to your mood or whatever a song playing in the background that you think is just like. A whatever a kind of song you know they just picked it's just like it's, it's taking random, a month yeah, yeah not random to like so that that would probably still interest me yeah and do you plan uh let, let's say that even after rocket league do you plan on doing that or do you plan to just move on to another game uh i probably wouldn't move on to another game i i like my goal with my life was to work in esport in some kind of way right okay yeah and when I gave up on playing, I was like, okay, I'll just study something that can be related to eSport and I'll try and find my way in. Mm -hmm. And then when I got into Rocket League, I was not really interested in being a pro Rocket League player, actually. You know, of course, I enjoy playing video games from, for, the, for my livelihood, yeah. but I always saw Rocket League as like a foot in the door to yeah. eSport. I never really saw it as like a... The end game? Yeah, exactly. I wanted to make a good impression with Aux. I wanted to, uh, I don't know, I guess like just show everybody that I'm hardworking, even though I don't have an education. I'm I'm not dumb, you know, I have a head on my neck. Yeah. Uh, so, and hopefully the experience I have with the written Rock League and with the organizations and stuff will be able to carry me through to another job whenever I'm done. Oh, so you were, you, okay, interesting. So... Basically, whenever you retire from Rocket League, you still want to be working in esports. Yes. What would be the the dream job title, let's say, for for you in esports? Um, 
I think so far, my dream job, do you know uh, Khan? He's the CGO for Fnatic. He's uh, an old CS 1.6 player. That is not, well, based... not going to bail. What's his name? Khan, like C-E-A-I-N. Well, that's his in-game name. I think most people who watch 1.6 will know him. Okay. He's like even today known for being one of the greatest in-game leaders in CS of all time. But uh, basically, he's my boss now, uh, okay. and he is doing in an insane amount of work for Fnatic. And I think whenever I'm done, I would like to follow him, you know, be like kind of a right hand and learn from him, because yeah. I think watching his job would give you an insane experience that you couldn't trade for anything else. And if I don't know if you can share this info, but specifically, like what does uh, an average day look like for him? Like, what does he do? I think it's just meetings from like 10 <laughs> in the morning to 11 in the evening. <laughs> but you like meetings. Well, no, but like it's more the context of the meetings. Yeah. Like he's a he's a big part of a fanatic. Like he runs a good amount of fanatic. He is a, without Patrick or without Khan in, in fanatic. I really doubt that fanatic would be where it is now. Well, that's perfect. Thank you so much for giving me the time of the times, Nancy. You're welcome.